Namaskaram and my best wishes to every one of you who are at the European Union Agri-Research Conference. It is wonderful to see that so many policymakers, scientists, farmers and experts have come together to ensure the sustainability of agriculture and health of soil. It's very important that European Union takes the lead in this because the whole world looks up to you when it comes to sustainability. So, you have the responsibility not just for Europe, but for the entire planet. I'm glad you're doing this right now. The European Union soil strategy for 2030 has holistic soil health as its mandate. The recent common agriculture policy of uh, 21 to 27 for the entire European Union region has 40% of its budget allocated to climate-relevant interventions, including improving soil health. The European Green Deal, refreshingly, unlike most of the world, sees healthy soil as a solution to climate change issues. These are all great steps forward. I am not a scientist <laughs> in any way, but my understanding of European Union's soil revitalization policies right now is they are very comprehensive but too complex for the average farmer to implement. I want you to understand my view of the soil is the worm's view. <laughs> I've crawled on this planet for six and a half decades and I know what the worm knows. I'm not a scientist or an environmentalist, but we must understand that it is not the scientists and academics who are going to execute the soil revitalization. It is the farmers. If you give them one simple point which would make a difference, they can do it, especially because farm economy is so fragile all over the world. Any kind of drastic changes will, will be resisted and will be unimplementable. So when it comes to soil revitalization, the most important thing is increasing the soil organic matter in the soil. If you increase the organic matter in the soil, the need for fertilizer or any other input will naturally come down, the organic activity will multiply manifold. This is why as a part of Safe Soil Movement, we proposed a simple thumb rule for farmers that their land should have a minimum of three to six percent organic matter based on regional conditions. How they do it is up to them. It is not a total solution, but it will be a significant step towards soil revitalization to fix various other ecological issues as well. Above all, enhance organic activity in the soil, which is very, very vital for all life on this planet as microbial life is the foundational life for every other life, including our lives. To achieve this percentage of organic matter in soil, we presented a three-pronged strategy to UNCCD COP15. First is the governments of the world need to incentivize the farmers to raise organic matter in their soils. Second, we must simplify the carbon credit market so that it is accessible to farmers. Third, you need a market recognition which evaluates the produce as per the organic matter of the soil which it comes from. If these three actions are implemented, we can easily achieve three to six percent organic matter in soil subject to regional conditions, greatly enhance microbial activity and sequester water in a significant way. And above all, the soil will not radiate heat. It is truly inspiring to see that there is now a European Union Missions Soil Manifesto for Europe. This will be supportive in helping both citizens and stakeholders raise their voices in support of healthy soil. I would encourage everyone in Europe to sign the manifesto to be active participants in ensuring Europe's soil is rich for generations to come. My best wishes to everyone at this conference. The speed at which we revitalize soil now will decide the future of humanity in years to come. Save soil. Let's make it happen.